Well, hey, everybody. Good morning. Let me get my coffee. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation Room. This is a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat. We just hang out in here. All of my friends of Becky, I see you guys. Hi, Betsy. And uh, we chat and uh, talk all things stitching or any particular project or whatever. There is a virtual kitchen. Please wander over. Bonnie has the coffee ready. And I think there's some goodies in there. So please make yourself at home. Okay. On your way in, hit the thumbs up button. It's right there on the door as you walk by. I appreciate that very much. Hope you guys are doing well. Things are good here. Awesome. Awesome. Yesterday afternoon, Keith popped in and said, there's some tree service guys here and they're going to clean up the front yard and cut down a couple dead trees. So that was awesome. They were here all day yesterday and they'll be back again at nine this morning for the backyard. So that's great because it looks a little rough back there after the winter. So today I had wanted to talk to you guys. A lot of you are getting ahead and already starting the Happy Halloween quilt from uh, Amy Bradley Designs. Hold on. I need a swig. And uh, I've got, I've just got some tips for you about how to set up the basic block. This is what I'm doing. Well, Quilting Concepts, you're so gracious. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hold on. I got to get a piece of fabric that's sitting over here on the mat. Oh, I put a cutting mat on my ironing station so I could show y'all how this fantastic trimmer by George works. For those of you that don't know about it or don't have one, I've got a link to it below in the description box. And if you're making this quilt, you're definitely going to want to get yourself one of those, not just for this quilt, but for any in the hoop quilting project, right? Like anything from Designs by Juju or Hoop Sisters or Sweet Pea, any of those things where you create a block, like a quilt block in your embroidery machine, and then you sew them all together. So yeah, you made it, Carol. Glad you're here. Um, so our fabric for the kit from Two Chicks Quilting. I'm wearing their shop shirt today. Um, I'll show you. I've got a little, little organization going on here. I have a whole bunch of batting cut from a hoop. It's oversized, but I didn't feel like trimming down the big scrap I had left over from a long arming project. So it's a little bit big, but it's fine. So I've got, these are my, for my blocks, monster blocks. Okay. And then in this bucket, and I got this at walmart.com, uh, they have, they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, this is where I have all my fabrics and they're in order. So for those of you who haven't gotten your kit yet or whatever, um, maybe you haven't gotten a kit or if you have in the kit, you're going to get all of your fabrics with a tag on them that tell you what number fabric this is. And then that co number corresponds to the, in, in the kit, you get a, uh, y'all have to thank Nicole for this. She's wonderful. Nicole is the one who picked all of our fabrics from, she's one of the two chicks. And then you get these pages right here. And it'll tell you like fabric 10 is Mr. Monster shirt insert, Mrs. Monster eyelids. So you know exactly which fabric goes with which piece. And uh, it looks like it's awesome. I just love it. So then from their key, I went through the monster blocks and this is on the blog. I've got it linked below. I created a key that shows by monster block, which fabrics go in that block. So you can just print this out and then do a pull. You know, you can just go, okay, today I'm going to make the pumpkin. So I need 10, 11, 12, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Makes it pretty easy. Okay. First time live. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Yeah, if you guys are new, please pop in. <laughs> Sally says, I will not shop today. I will not shop today. 
uh, put in there that you're new. We have a welcoming committee wandering around various places, but they'll surround you with giant virtual hugs and welcome you. So you're, if you're quilting on the long arm, do you still need batting in the hoop? I would Harriet. Um, yeah. So if you're not doing the background quilting, but you're going to, you're planning on doing like multi-point on the pro stitcher, right? Yeah. I, I, You know, that's completely up to you, how you want to do that. So let's get through me showing you how I'm going to be doing the blocks on the embroidery machine and setting all that up. And then you can make that decision for yourself. Okay. Completely up to you. So anyway, now I'm getting a lot of email questions about the instructions in the pattern. Okay. Y'all, I haven't even looked at these instructions other than final block size. That's all I'm looking for is the final block size for the monster blocks, the happy Halloween words block and the sashing and the cornerstones. Because when you're doing a quilt in the embroidery machine, the concepts are completely different. The cut amounts are completely different. So don't even pay attention to those. Okay. Star, you're here. I wanted to uh, let you know yesterday when I sent that email back to you, I was wrong on the on the um, the trim size. I said the trim size would be nine and a half by eleven and a half, just like a regular quilt block, and that should have been ten by twelve, because I am going to make half inch seam allowances, and the reason being because I am doing the background quilting. And Harriet, you may want to make yours with quarter inch seam allowances, like you're used to, if you're going to be quilting it on the long arm. Okay. So the, um, when, when it's all said and done, there's going to be a teeny tiny little bit of batting. If you do it my way, you do it like this. I'm doing, I'm building it just like a designs by Juju wall hanging or Kimber Bell or whatever. So there's going to be Scotchy batting in that seam allowance. And it's, I press my seams open went and then hit it with a clapper. And it's much easier to do that in this instance with that little bit of fuzz in there with half inch seam allowance as opposed to quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. We have a new bead. Lisa, welcome. If I miss you, I'm sorry because I'm looking at you guys and I'm not reading the comments. It's, you know, I got one eye over here and one eye right here. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to go over today in brilliance and show you a few things that I have learned in my travels, because some of you are getting ahead and we can talk about um, what I'm doing to make it all work out. Good morning, Frito. Hello. Come here, baby girl. You want this? My dog's here. Frito's popped in. Hello, Frito. What is that? Oh, we got a goldfish. Good morning. Good girl. She gets one goldfish fish a day now. Okay. Oh, good. Sue, your embroidery budget took a hit yesterday. That's all right. Good for you. That's fine. All right. So let me show you. Uh, I finished the bat yesterday. Look at him. Isn't he awesome? I love this. Now, again, on mine, I'm centering my monsters in the hoop. If you follow the, the look of the pattern, the body, the, the base of each one of these is down on the line. I don't want that bulk, those fabric edges in my, right near the seam allowance. So that's just me. You can do it any way you want. Okay. But I'm going to be centering mine in the hoop. I will have a little bit of background quilting down below, and then you will see the blanket stitch on the bottom of the, the block or the bottom of the applique. But in, in the picture, in the pattern, there is no blanket stitching on the bottom of the applique. It looks like he's just down in there in the seam allowance. Okay. Hugs for Frito. Thank you, Bernadette. So thoughtful. So yeah, thumbs up everybody. Thanks, Midge. Um, oh, somebody's giving you a belly rub, Frito. So let me show you the final block, what I do with my fabric. 
Okay, so here he is, Mr. Pumpkinhead here, okay? I love this guy. <laughs> I think he's awesome. Um, so this is a this is the trimmed block. And see how nice and tiny that edging is of how that's done. If you don't have the trimmer by George, you're going to want to create a basting box a couple of times. We'll do it here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, he drives you batty. He's so cute. I know. He's adorable. My goodness. Um, you'd want to stitch out a basting box on your stabilizer if you need a placement line, right? Uh, or you can throw a big piece of batting over it and throw, I uh, do the basting box on the batting to tell you where to put your fabric. Okay. And then you can lay your fabric over that. But once the basting box is done on the batting, you're going to want to remove the hoop and trim all the way around and get this, get this off, get your batting out of the way. Okay. Cause it's, it's better. It doesn't matter if there's some no-show mesh in your seam allowance. It, there's nothing to it. And so it won't be bulky or anything. So, but this is what my, this is what my seam allowance looks like. So it's a half inch. Okay. And I, I trimmed it using the trimmer by George. Peggy loves her trimmer by George. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys how that works here in a minute. Okay. So what I'm going to do this morning for y'all is I have the witch uh, almost finished digitizing. And I want to give you some tips on how, while you're talking about the trimmer by George, can I demonstrate how to make the case they offer? No, I don't have that case. <laughs> That's too much like work, Dan, way too much. <laughs> Dan calls me skill sergeant. <laughs> We share a, a veteran bond. Yeah. Isn't the final block size nine by 11 and a half? I don't, I thought it was nine by 11. Let me look. Mine are nine by 11 now. There's nothing for it. It's over. I've scaled it to that. So hold on a second here. Let me double check because I might have to re remake these. Let me see. Uh, place a 10 by 12 and a half. It might be 9 by 11 and a half. Well, let me see here. Where did I get 9 by 11? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Double check measurements of nine by 11 and a half square and trim using a rotary cutter ruler. Well, here's the deal on that. Yep. Nine by 11 and a half. Well, I did mine at nine by 11. If you haven't done the background quilting yet, let me. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's just the height. That's not going to be a big deal for me. It's on the width. Nine by 11 and a half. Okay. I'll make it work. But I got to talk to Julie from Des uh, Designs by Juju because that background quilting is designed for 9 by 11 blocks. Finished. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very fixable. Not a big deal. All right. Because if it's the height, y'all can even stretch those designs a little bit. And they'll be fine. They'll work. They'll work. I'm not redoing it. No way. I'm not redoing it. All right. So let me show you some tricks on digitizing with the, um, the stitches. All right. As long as the blocks are all the same, it does not matter. That's right, Midge. Absolutely right. And mine are all going to be nine by 11. I've said it that way. So you can do nine by 11 and a half if you want. Yep. Stretch or center them. That'd be fine. Okay. It's not like quilting, you guys. It's completely different. Completely different. Okay. 
Oh, you should blame me, Bernadette. I got it wrong. That's okay. I got big shoulders. It's fine. So I'm going to share my screen here in brilliance with you guys. And just show you how I've put all this together. Okay. Isn't she gorgeous? I love her. All right. So take a look here. I want to show you, I'm going to get bigger and see how we're bunched up right here, right in there and here on the sides and maybe here on the eyelids and he, right in here. If they're too close together, if I click the remove hidden stitches button, they didn't all remove. We've got some more. We've got some right here. We've got some right here. Right. And it just, they're, they're bunching up. And what happens is you're going to get stitch ends from the face, the edge of the face poking past the hair. And we don't want that. So the way to fix that is to just do, you could do a couple of different things. She's on an E stitch. First of all, I need to fix that. Let me, let me go in and fix all this. Mm. I think, isn't that most of the applique? Yeah. Let me get into stitch artist. Oh, okay. Let me do all these applique pieces so I can get that applique tab down here to figure out what I'm doing. Okay. So that's all the applique and I am going to change it to a blanket stitch. Okay. So we're two and a half by three with two and a half length and three width. All right. Oh, the eyes. Where'd they go? Let me see. Quit jumping around. All right. Well, that looks like I got it all. But I lost my applique tab. So. All right. What you can do is you can just choose the eyes and the eyelids. I'm going to just choose the eyelids. All right. And I can move them down just a tiny bit to give a bigger gap between the edge of the eye fabric and the lids. Okay. Just give a little bit bigger gap. And then I can take the nose and I can move it up just a tiny bit. All right. So once I've done that, then if I get out of Stitch Artist and go and remove hidden stitches, Now you can see they're not all bunched up. So that's a trick to be able to do that. Um, so like for the hat, the hat's got a problem. See how that's all wonky right there? Okay. You can take the hat and you can bring it down just a tiny bit. And then not have to get the hat band as well and move it and get it right. Okay. So it's not, I'll have to play with it a little bit, but then when I do this now, that's nice and clean right there. See that? So that's how you can fix your issues with hidden stitches. Let me get back over here and see what you guys are talking about. Okay. Star, thank you for the sticker, darling. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Okay. So Eyelids are still on e-stitch. Thanks. I'll go in and fix all of that. Um, I just wanted to show you. Um, okay. Yeah. So I've done many videos using the trimmer by George. Okay. And um, Lisa brings up a good point. She's an embroiderer and not a quilter at all. So she has a benefit here. She's not coming into this with a quilter mindset. And that can be a little... It's, it's, it's night and day, apples and oranges. Okay. And the way you think is, is 
different on that. So I'll go in and, and play with that. You went to search the trimmer online. No, it's not in my Amazon store, Heidi. In the description box below, if click on the more button. There's a little thing. It says more dot, dot, dot. Click that. And then it'll have trimmer, trimmer by George right under there. I put that there up at the top this morning. If you'd use my link, I appreciate it. Okay. And it doesn't take you to Amazon. They're not sold on Amazon. Oh, it what? They are sold on Amazon. And it showed up in your Google, Google, Google search. <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> Funny. Well, I appreciate that. So, um, but if you buy them from Hoop Sisters, it's better for me than Amazon. Amazon's cheap. Okay. But it's completely up to you. You get, if you have Prime, get it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's get back over here to her. Uh, Let's see. I need to get that bat. See, you know, I don't know why I'm not getting my applique tab. Oh, because I'm not in Stitch Artist. That's why. There we go. So let's switch that to the blanket. And make sure everything looks. You can press down the space bar uh, and your hand, your, your thing turns into a hand. And then you can just pan the screen. And the shirt. The e-stitch is the default. All right. I've got some work to do with the hair because I've got some stuff over here that's not working out. Hold this down. I also want to show you a little trick, too, you might enjoy. I'm going to move this in. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit like that. And then same for this one. Move it in just a little bit. I don't want to hit the eye. Of course, it won't matter. It's under fabric. And then, okay. So now let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, I've still got some stitches there. But you can see it cleaned up right here. OK, and I've, I've got some overlapping stitches here. Now, if you have enthusiast, let me show you a trick. I'm going to come in. Let me hold down my space bar. Move this down. I don't want these stitches poking out from underneath here. If you have enthusiast, that's this little pointer right up here with with the single stitch. I'm going to click that. And that makes all the stitches show into these little dots. And I can take it and click it and hit delete on my keyboard and that will clean it up. So if you don't have enthusiast, if you're doing these kinds of projects, you might find that very handy. See? So that's cool to be able to clean that up like that. I got a little weird one here. Let me hit that. Okay. If you don't have enthusiast, it's a little bit more difficult to get rid of them, but it can be done. So you have to do it with the stitch simulator. Change the color of the threads that you don't want. And then I think that's fine. Delete those in the objects panel. That's how you do that. So it's a little bit more difficult. So I've got a little overlap here on the eyelid. I don't think that's that big of a deal. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. Now I want to show you something else that's really cool. So let's look at her nose. And let me jump into Stitch Artist. See where the start stop is right here? Right out there in front of plain as day, right on the nose, right where everybody's going to look at the block. You can get some buildup there of thread, and that needs to be a blanket stitch. And that's not very good to have that big of a blanket. You know, you don't want that thick stitch there from the tie off. Let me put 2.5 and see. That's a little better. And I'm going to make this stitch a 2.0. That's better. So what you can do, because is it doesn't matter where it's going to, let me see. Yeah, the nose sits on top of everything, doesn't it? So it's up to you where you want that, that to be, the tie in and tie off. Um, I wouldn't have it down here. You know, it might work better. So you hover over it and you can grab it and you can move it. 
maybe put it over here, right? And I don't want it right on a stitch. And I talk about this in the how to's in my videos. And then I'm going to grab this one. You wait until your cursor turns into a bow there like that. And then you can move them. It's completely up to you. However you guys want to do that. Okay. I think she's probably ready for um, stitching. Oh, this right here. I've got a gap right there on that bit of the smile because I moved the nose. So let me, where's, where is this piece right here? I want to move that so that it's underneath the nose. And then I'm going to move this one. See? And that looks pretty good. These are all up here. That's what, that's where those are. You want those to stitch before. Um, they're not in the right order at all. They need to go on top of her head. This has a lot more work I need to do on it. So I'm not quite ready. All right. So we'll, I'll just go. I got to get the stitch order right. Okay. Okay. I'll stitch artist. She's looking pretty good. I just need to realign the stitch order. So for the background quilting, what I did, let me grab it and bring it in. All right. So there's the background quilting, okay? And then in Brilliance, you can just come up here to Utility and say based design, and there it is. And it puts it first automatically, number one over here in the objects panel is your basting box. That's gonna be the first thing that goes down. And then let me make sure, I think she's centered, yeah. And then if you want to create a placement line, you can either use your needle plus minus to go back and do it again, or in the, Objects panel, highlight it, right? Oh, um, no, highlight, click on the basting box itself. And in the design window, right click, copy, right click, paste. And it put it last, but it's highlighted, right click, and move first. So now it's going to run twice. There's a placement line, there's your tack down, and your final trim. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff that's very, very simple to do. You just have to know where the button is to click it, right? I hope that helped. Yes, I am covering all of this in the directions for uh, for the ghost, okay? You guys, the ghost video is over an hour long because it's baby step by baby step to take you through it. And then there's a little one minute intro on the beginning of each of the other videos that says, hi, this is what this project is. And if you need baby step help, you need to go watch the ghost because I it's, they're just way too long, way too long. That helped a lot. Oh, good. I'm glad it. Yeah. Now also I'll give you a, another little tip for you guys. When you're, so when you're doing applique like a quilt, yes, the placement sheet has the parts numbered. Very handy. That's the that's your stitch order. You just have to look at that and figure it all out, okay? But the thing is, in Embrilliance, when you draw the lines for like the mouth and all that, the software may automatically put it first unless you go create design, begin new design and do it again and make that number two, or it might put it, you just got to double check and be sure. Okay. Is there a get, way to get rid of the jump stitches? Yes. Tina, after they stitch, stop the machine and trim them out. <laughs> That's the way <laughs> y'all the software does what the software does. And if I was a digitizer, I would be able to tell you all those little tips and how to do that. But, um, how do I include how to do the basting box? I just did that, Heidi. You go to utility, base design, boom, done. 
And yes, I do include that in the design just for the ghost, because what I did was I created a separate embroidery design. And I tell you to do this in the ghost, the basting box and the background quilting are one design. And I saved it as its own embroidery file. And so once I get the digitizing all done of the, 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 the monster, then I just drag that in as one design. It just saves a couple of steps. So, okay. So I'll give you another little hint here. All right. When I put this all together, I just did the ears, okay? The outer ear and the two inner ears. And I'm looking at those vector graphics and I just got those together off on one side of the screen and I got them exactly like I wanted them. And then I got the eyeballs. So the eyes and the eyelids. And I got those placed exactly where I wanted them. And there's a little lock, I'll show you. Can you see the quilting through the applique? No, you cannot. And I'll show you why. So here's the background quilting. This needs to go first. And then I'm gonna move it to below the basting boxes. What's that? The smile. I'm gonna move this last. So that stitches after everything. Okay. Um, so then you have the background quilting and then you have the witch. And that's the image. I'm going to move that last and get that out of the way. And then we have her little bat. And there's her little whiskers. Her mole. That little mole she's got. And... What is that? Is that top of her shirt? What is that? Oh, that's the smile on the bat, right? Does the bat have a smile? I think he does. Let me see. I can't see in here. It's too dark to see the picture. Okay. Yeah, he does have a smile. Yep, there he is. There's his two little eyes. Okay. So let me show you now, let me jump out. I'm not, I'm not in stitch artist. Okay. When I remove hidden stitches, it creates a mask. Well, it, it, it didn't do it right there, but that's no big deal. That's fine. Those might be jump stitches under there, but it creates the mask in there. It's too skinny. It doesn't bother with it, but on the big pieces, it did it. So it's great. Okay. So. All right. I think she is about ready to go to the machine. Yep. And I just want to make sure that I've got that stitch for her eyeballs. Where's the eyes? Right here. Oh, she does not have it. Doesn't she have a line between her eyes? She does. Where is that line at? Right here. So I need to take this. And I want to move it. I'm going to drag it up. If it Sometimes it's hard to drag up all the way. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to grab it. And I want it to stitch right after the eyes. Whoop. Hover it over the... All right, we're having problems. I'll just right click. Move earlier. There we go. So that'll stitch right after the eyes come down. Okay. The eyes are still e-stitch. Okay. And yes, the smile does need to go before the nose. Thanks, Carolyn. Mm-hmm. It does smooth out the quilting. Yeah, it sure does. Let me get back in there. 
You guys are helping me with this. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so the face, the smile, applique, get back in here. There we go. That looks all right. Let me see. Let me make sure. Yeah, their blanket and the lids. Where are the lids? That, no, that's her hat band. Are these all one? No. Where are those lids? Let me click it. Right there. And that's too big. That's a small piece. And I think that's okay. Yeah. And then everything else is blanket. Okay. Did I miss anything? I got the E-stitch on the eyes. Takes a village to build an embroidery design. Yes, it sure does. Is the quilting removed under the witch? Yes, Connie, it is. It sure is. Yeah. Voila. Okay. Is there a way to change the default applique stitch to blanket from e-stitch? I wish. No. I looked all over. I'm going to write them and ask. Okay. Now let's make your life easy. We're talking about minimal trips to the ironing station. Okay. So once you get this all done, you can just come back and watch this. Um, if for the Merry Christmas. So once you get this all done, I'm going to go to, oh, I'm, let's see, I'm going to, uh, file save as stitch and working. So I've up to this point, I've just been saving the working file. Okay. And that's what I had on my USB stick that I pulled in. So save as stitch and working. And I'm just going to go, which dash final. Okay. I'm saving it. And this is my laptop. I'm not um, doing everything here. So I'm going to save. Okay. You cannot separate. So if you look here in the applique stitch, I'm still in the working file right here. You can't separate while you can see the color is the position stitch and the final down here in the, um, down here in the properties box. You can't separate out those pieces. You can only do that in the embroidery design itself. So I'm going to open a new page by just clicking the new button up here. And I'm going to bring it in from my downloads where I just saved it. Let me find my downloads folder. Where it is. There it is. Okay. And let me make sure on my view, one of these is a PES design, this one. Okay. All right. So this is now an embroidery file. Okay. It's not a working file anymore. So when I click this, now in the objects panel is when we see um, it merged my basting box into one, I think, unless it put the other one down at the bottom. Nope. So now here in the objects panel, we can see Placement line, final stitch. I've got to look at the pieces order and make sure this is right, you guys. But I want to show you. So there's the placement line, final stitch. Placement line for the hair. I hate it that I can't see these that well. Okay, that bothers me. So what you can do is you can double click it and you can say um, left hair PMT for placement. All right. So I know that's the left hair placement. And then right here, this is the right hair placement. Right hair PMT. 
All right, so I want the right hair placement to stitch right after the left hair placement. So it's gonna stitch placement line, placement line, final stitch, final stitch, see? Okay, that's so that's minimizing. I'm gonna run this one and then run that one and then take the hoop out, go to the ironing board, right? Or you can use your needle plus minus and jump around if you want. So then we have placement, final. See how it merged the smile with the, the software automatically did that. I've got an issue right here. See this? That's going to look weird. I got to fix that. So the, she's not ready for prime time just yet. Find the placement. Yep. So on the bat... On the bat, you learn something new? Yay, Tina. Hooray, hooray. So on the bat, okay, I digitized it so that it stitched. Placement, placement, final, final, placement, final. Be, and then same with the eyelids and same with the outer wings. And same with the teeth. No, not the teeth. It merged this tooth and the smile. And so I had this, this is stitched in black on the tooth. See that? So I stopped it right after it finished the black. And then I changed my threads and I let it do the smile. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do that highlight rename. Now don't do the highlight rename in, um, in, if you do it in the BE file, when you save it, it changes them all back. Big waste of time. <laughs> At least it did that for me. So But highlighting and renaming on the embroidery file, that stays there when you save it. It's very handy. Okay. I make sure that I, this is just, uh, this is just things that I've learned along the way, making these blocks. Okay. Just makes life a little bit easier. Okay. <laughs> So let me do, um, can I separate what the software merges? Probably. Yeah, I'd have to go back. Yes, you can. On the bat, what I ended up doing, what I should have done and didn't pay attention to, you click on just the tooth, okay? and change the color, hit the color chip and change it to black and then make sure just the smile is white. So can you fill in the teeth? Sure. Sarah, if you wanted to create uh, little triangles in Stitch Artist, you certainly could. Yeah, you certainly could. You'd be just saying bad words. <laughs> nah, it's easy peasy. Yeah, so Betty Boop made them a fill. Yep. And because they're small. When I cut mine out, they didn't cut all the way through that white fabric. The eyeballs did, but the teeth didn't. So I just left them on that big chunk of fabric and then trimmed them right before I sewed them because I thought sure they'd fly away somewhere. So now I want to show you how I'm going to trim up my bat block with the trimmer by George. Okay. Um, I have not successfully been able to create a basting box without an embroidery design already loaded in the luminaire. I fiddle around with it this morning, but let's see. Okay. 
You'll take notes when you remember. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with him. I thought he turned out just adorbs. Even if my quilt's going to be a tiny bit shorter than yours, it will be pretty. All right. My chickens are back, Julianne. All right. Let me, I've got cords in the way of my, what I'm trying to do here. All right. Okay. So on the trimmer by George, now this thing has this metal edge on it, all right? And if you use a regular rotary trimmer, you're not going to get a good cut because the button gets in the way. You can use a rotary trimmer, like if you have this one, I don't remember who makes this, Clover. This one works because the button doesn't get in the way. The button's very shallow on this particular trimmer. See how shallow that is? This one, the button's a lot bigger. So they recommend this rotary cutter, the, the 60 millimeter. And what I do is I just fold up the pretty fabric and I've got a link to it below you guys. So I fold up the pretty fabric and you take that metal edge and you just put it right up against that fabric okay and then you fold it over just like this so that you're looking at the letters right side up and then you trim and i do it on the short sides of the block first okay and then i'll save these and uh overlap stitch them together and make bigger batting make i'm, I'm sorry make more stabilizer and then i flip this over and where, because this is my basting boss line, and I align this with the half inch on this ruler. Now, can you do this without the ruler? Yes. It's uh, precarious. Okay. So there's one side. And look, look how nice that is. It's perfect. Just perfect. So this is just the best way to trim your block. Now, if if you get a little bubble of fabric underneath, sticking out from underneath that metal edge, and you slice your fabric, you can go have a little pity party. And then you want to get yourself some, where is it? This is called stitch witchery, okay? And it's a fusible web. And then you take the piece you just cut off and you want to cut a piece bigger. It's a patch. It's going to be a patch. And you're going to put stitch witchery all around the outside of that. Okay. You can leave a little gap in the middle and then you put it underneath and you patch it and you iron it down and you're going to put fabric on that gap. And that gap's going to be in the seam allowance anyway, so it's not going to be seen. So don't freak out about it. Don't die over it. Just learn. Now, how do I know how to patch this? How do you think I know how to patch this? Huh? <laughs> because that's my life. I have to learn how to fix something when I do it wrong. Um, I didn't, I didn't trim that other side. Let me trim this back. Okay. He's all done. All right. There he is. All done. Okay.
use the frames feature yeah to resize to what you want thanks so inspired yeah bonnie thank you i'll look at that yes the steam seam will work too sure it but the thing with the the thing with stitch witchery is that it you know it's you need a double-sided fusible is what you need so that's all you have to have a double-sided fusible right so just make sure that it'll work. Okay. Now, how do you stitch these? Okay. So you, you put them together. When you get to where you're putting them together, what are you doing, Frida? So this is going to have sashing in between, right? But how you get these together is you take a pin and you put it right inside of that basting box line. And then you take a pin and put it right inside of the basting box line of the piece next to it, to its partner. Your seam allowances may or may not line up. Don't worry about it if they don't. This is not quilting, okay? And then I like to take a pin and I go in one side of the seam allowance and out the other to anchor those points. And then I'll do it again down here and inside the basting box, make sure you're inside of it and inside the basting box. All right. And anchor those points. And then you're going to sew right one needle width right inside of that basting box line. And when you open them all up, you don't see your lines. You don't see your basting boxes at all. That's how you do that. How do you get the stitch order to stay put? You, um, do you save it before, Pam? Are you saving it? Just control S and save your BE file. The, the software will kind of move it around a bit. What you can do too, let me show you what you can do. I think this will work. There's a lock. All right. Let me go back into my window here. So if I want to make sure that, um, oh, this is my PE design. There's my base. This is the, okay. So if I want to make sure that this stitches, after the head, you highlight whatever you want to stay put and there's a lock right here and you can lock that and that's not going anywhere. So that's very handy too. So when I, um, when I stitched the bat, when I got the eyes exactly like I wanted them, then I, locked those three pieces together, the eyes and the two eyelids, I locked them together. Now they don't stay together. They, they still move independently, but they don't rotate. And that's what you want. You want that to stay. You, you don't want that rotation. Okay. And then I did the body and the outer wings and I locked those. Then when it was time to put those three pieces together, the head, the ear piece, the eye piece, the, the face, the head, and the body is four pieces. They just all seamlessly came together, but I made sure to click all three of them in the objects panel on the eyes and the two eyelids. So they moved as one and they went exactly where I wanted them. And I, that's to get that. That's kind of the way I did that. I hope that makes sense. Anyone have a recommendation for a circle cutter for fabric? Mm, yeah, scan and cut. <laughs> So Vicki's asking what color thread I'm using for the background quilting. I'm using coordinating thread colors for the background quilting. Whatever color purple blends best. But then I'm using black for all of the applique, except like on his mouth where it's white. So for the applique, it's black. I want that cartoony look. If you want to switch out your color. Uh, yeah, the lock might keep the software from merging. That's true. Never thought of that. 
um, you don't have a scan and cut yet. <laughs> So today I was going to base down, like I'll use a different purple. I've got, I've got this purple up here for this one. See, so I'm using coordinating thread for background colors. Okay. <laughs> Linda, look how smart you sound. How about that? That's awesome. She's got a smart son. And she was saying Vector. And he's like, ooh, mom, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Your brain hurts. Oh, Sally, you'll get used to it. It's just another thing. So. Why do some people's stitches not cover the edges of the applique? It's all about stitch length or stitch width and alignment. That's what it is. Stitch width and alignment. So um, Becky wants to know what size hoop I'm using for the Happy Halloween. This is a 9 by 14. This is the smallest hoop I have where the block will fit. So I'm using the 9 by 14. Can I show how to do a fill? Sure, Betty Boop. I know you know how. Let me show you how to do this. Very simple. There's a button, y'all. Of course, there's always a button, right? Okay. So I did a fill for her eyes. Let me go into Stitch Artist. This is the fill button right here next to the pencil. So these buttons right here are for drawing. You draw whatever you want. And then these buttons right here are for how you want that drawn shape to be stitched. Okay. So you have a draw, you have a set of drawing tools to draw shapes, and then you have a set of stitch tools to fill those shapes or do a run stitch or whatever. Let me show you something cool. So you can, this is handy too. This is why I don't put the background quilting in until the last because you can't see through it. If you want this to hide, you can click on this lock right here, which is lock and hide. And then when you click back on the screen, it's gone, but it's not gone. It's still there. So that's very handy to give you a cleaner space to work in. So to do the fill for the eyes, I'm going to use, there's a set of tools right here. Okay. So the default is the square. So just hit the drop down and get the circle for the eyes. I'm going to hold the shift key so I get a nice pretty circle. And now I want that to be a fill. So I'm just going to click this fill button right here. Boom. That's simple. Okay. So for the teeth, I imagine you could do a draw point. And they're wider across the top. I'm holding my shift key down to get a straight line as straight as possible. Okay, and then hit enter and then make it a fill and then size it down to whatever you want. That's how you do that. Easy peasy. How about that? You need in-person lessons? You'll get it. Um, <clears throat> Y'all, I have so many videos on in brilliance. And by the end of this series, if you watch every one of these, you're going to start anticipating where the clicks are going to go and what's going to happen and why. Will in brilliance save as an FCM or vector file? It will not, Betty. No, I don't believe so. I don't think it has that capability. It will, well, it's it'll save SVG file. Yeah, it will. It will. I forgot. Yeah, it will. So, yes, of course. Right. Anyone have a virtual alcoholic breakfast drink? I think there's Bloody Marys in the kitchen, El Faber. And if you dig around under the cabinet, um, there, I think there's a case of champagne for mimosas, if there's any orange juice. 
Can you use the preloaded shapes? Sure, absolutely, yes, you can. And what she's talking about there, that's right, you can also use the preloaded shapes. So what she's, what she's talking about is, when you're right here, there's a, this looks like a little flower. There's a library. It says merge designs, but it's a library of shapes. Look at that. So there's her nose, <laughs> literally. So you can just click around on here and look at all these different shapes. You've got shields and stars. Y'all, these are, uh, here's your basic shapes. There's your tooth. And you can double click on that line and edit the points to make it the size triangle you want. How handy is that? Yes, Suzanne, you can use, you can do everything I just showed you in Stitch Artist too. You sure can. Yep, let me stop sharing. So, you guys poke around, play with it, use your scrap basket, test. Oh, our hour is up. Oh, my goodness. We're a minute after. Okay. Well, you guys, this has been fun. Don't forget Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, is the, I'm going to demo, show new products that have come in and new fabric I've got. It's at 4 p.m. Sunday. That's my monthly live then on Sunday. And I've got some very cool giveaways. So one of, uh, one of you, um, Mona has an extra license for density repair kit. And she has given that to me to give to you. So I'm going to give away a license, an unused license for density repair kit from Ebrilliance on Sunday. Yeah. So that's very cool. And what density repair kit does is it takes pre-existing designs that you bought like from a vendor somewhere. And if it's, if, if you got it, it's feels like a flak vest, it'll clean some of that up. It's very, very good for poorly digitized designs. It's very cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool, isn't it? So Mona was very generous and she, she wanted me to give it away. She wrote to, she already had a copy of it and she bought it again accidentally. And she wrote to him brilliance and said, can I return it? And they said, no, cause you can't return software, right? but you can give that away. And so she is going to give that away. So it has not been registered. The license for it has not been registered and you can register that. So that's very nice of her. Thank you, Mona. But I said that I was going to do that when I hit 72,000 subscribers, which is what I did yesterday. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed our little mini lessons today. We got a lot done, right? So and then um, 4 p.m. Central. Yes, ma'am. I will put a blog post out it, uh, about it today. I will put a blog post about it out today. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And uh, then and also put it in our Facebook group with a link so everybody can make it. But you guys, come on in. There were over 1,200 last month. My goodness, that's a lot. All right, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go say something. Bye.